Welcome to the Coronavirus Weekly Brief. We're your hosts. I'm David Sturman. And I'm Emily Schneider. Here are the headlines you need to know. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention announced Thursday that Americans fully vaccinated against COVID-19 can safely participate in indoor and outdoor activities without a mask. Backtracking on guidance from April 27th, saying fully vaccinated people should still mask in some situations. CDC Director Rochelle Walensky cited falling case numbers, growing evidence that vaccines protect against coronavirus variants, and the recent authorization of the Pfizer vaccine for teenagers. According to Walensky, the CDC relaxed its guidelines based on evolving scientific evidence, not because of political pressure or as an incentive to get vaccinated which some health experts already encourage. Real-world data from Israel and the U.S. showed that Moderna and Pfizer vaccines reduce viral load, thus lowering the risk of transmission, and breakthrough infections appear relatively rare. Masks will still be required in public transportation and during air travel. The CDC recommended that schools keep using masks. Local governments can still require masks, as can individual businesses, Healthcare settings will set their own masking rules. Following the CDC announcement, President Biden said the government is asking Americans, particularly those who are unvaccinated, to keep wearing a mask as needed. But the White House will not be officially enforcing the rule. Quote, it's not an enforcement thing. We are not going to arrest people, Biden said. In response to the news, almost all U.S. states have updated their public health guidance. Some states, like North Carolina, will basically remove mask mandates as well as social distancing with capacity limits. Others are lifting indoor mask mandates just for fully vaccinated people, while states like New York are approaching the shift more cautiously and reviewing the evidence. Most states are expected to drop mask mandates by the end of the month, though local-level requirements might stay in place. As businesses grapple with the CDC's updated guidance, Walmart became the first major company to lift the mask requirement for vaccinated customers and employees. Costco and Trader Joe's followed suit. The apparent suddenness of the CDC's announcement caught some U.S. individuals and businesses off guard, leaving them confused as to how to approach the masks going forward. Israel's shelling of Gaza has halted all COVID-19 vaccinations and testing in the Palestinian area, and health experts are concerned about the risk of superspreading as civilians cram into shelters for safety. The leaders of the UN Palestinian Relief Agency's operations in Gaza and the head of the World Health Organization's Gaza sub-office said in an interview with the New York Times via Zoom that they feared COVID-19 infections would worsen as a result from the latest surge in hostilities. The number of people in Gaza sickened from COVID-19 has been, quote, just leveling off, and then this hit, said the UN agency official Matthias Schmel. It is a grim situation. WHO official Sasha Butzma said that before vaccinations were halted, 38,000 people in Gaza had received at least one dose of vaccine. But now, quote, people are not daring to visit health facilities. We are fearing this will have a major negative impact, said Butzma. Tedros Adnaham Ghebreyesus, Director General of the World Health Organization, encouraged wealthier countries with ample COVID-19 vaccine supply to donate their doses to under-resourced countries before moving on to vaccinating teens and kids. During a news conference Friday, Tedros touted COVAX, the WHO's Equitable Vaccine Distribution Initiative. He said, quote, we're on track for the second year of this pandemic to be far more deadly than the first. I understand why some countries want to vaccinate their children and adolescents, but right now I urge them to reconsider and to instead donate vaccines to COVAX, end quote. In what Tedros described as gross distortion in access to vaccines, around 44% of all coronavirus vaccine doses have been administered in high-income countries, which represent about 16% of the global population, compared to just 0.3% administered in the world's 29 poorest countries. Many retail companies are offering retraining to ensure that they have a sufficient workforce to handle the issues that come with increased reliance on online sales. The Wall Street Journal reports, Quote, the pandemic exposed a shortage of digital skills in retailing. Tens of thousands of retail workers were laid off a year ago as COVID-19 related restrictions required chains to close stores temporarily. Many have been rehired, but the jobs they are returning to aren't always the same, unquote. Mike Fergardine, chief executive of Choice Market, a Denver-based convenience store chain, told the journal, quote, it's not like there is a large pool of talent out there working in this space, adding, Quote, we want to upskill our employees from within. Verizon illustrates the trend of having retrained 20,000 employees as it closed its retail stores 
while planning to train 100,000 in 2021. To see our daily brief, go to the address in our show notes and follow us on Twitter, at New America ISP. The Coronavirus Weekly Brief was produced by Shannon Lynch and Jason Stewart and was edited by Shannon Lynch. The podcast is brought to you by New America and Arizona State University.